obviously very, uh, very proud of our effort against uh, Michigan State and uh, a tough environment against a very good team. And our guys, they, they, they played their best game. Uh, a lot of areas we can still improve on. And uh, you know, the directive to our team has been we gave them a mission. We accomplished the mission. What do you do when you accomplish a mission? You enjoy it. You, you uh, celebrate it. Then you learn from it. And then uh, good teams and championship level teams look forward to their next mission. So that's, uh, that's the, uh, uh, what we're using this week as far as just getting our team ready to go. Champions for Michigan State was defense. On defense, excuse me, Von Bell, uh, great at champion Michael Bennett, and player of the game is Duran Grant. Obviously, not near enough uh, for what we expect. On offense, you had three receivers: Evan Spencer, who was uh, uh, playing like the most valuable player on our team right now, and, and the things we ask him to do. Uh, he's my MVP as far as uh, just all around what we ask him to do. Uh, Jalen Marshall, great at champion, playing at a very high level, and Mike Thomas, which is. Uh, his improvement from last, really, since he's been here. And it's all about uh, the way he takes care of his business. And he's grading out and not every, every week we do uh, academic attitude and effort grade. And, you know, he used to screw around with a six or a seven and uh, was probably on his way out of here. Now he's a nine or 9.5. And that's the correlation between a, a guy that's got everything in order and playing well is, you know, I think everybody knows that, but that's, that's why Mike Thomas is playing well. He's taking care of his business. And that's a credit to I really, I told his dad when I, I saw him at Maryland, I said, that's because, you, you know, nowadays you get these third uncles that all they want to do is complain. And um, Michael Thomas' family did not. They said, what do we need to do to, to get better? How can we support the coaching staff? And guess what happened? Mike Thomas is playing at a very, very high level. Uh, Jeff Hireman, graded champion. Offense line had a couple uh, uh, bad situations early in that game, but boy, did they play well after they got going. Pat Elfline, graded champion, and Billy Price. Great a champion, a freshman in that environment against that defensive line. Players of the game went with four guys. And uh, they were, you know, I made them come up with names because they wanted to do the whole offense. But I just, I thought these, these, this was uh, my recommendation as well. Jacoby Bourne, I think he's back to back. Did he get last week too, Jerry, do you remember? Which is, once again, uh, just a tribute to Jacoby and the Bourne family. Played a champion. Uh, his most physical game he's played. Uh, J JT Barrett, he's our quarterback, in case you didn't know that. He's a great a champion as well. Ezekiel Elliott, um, once again, plays as hard as any back I've ever witnessed without the ball. And uh, played great and really physical uh, game. And Devin Smith played his best game, played with his most emotion, uh, and also did great in kicking game for us. So uh, that's the offensive and defensive champions. A couple of mentions for special teams, special teams player of the week is uh, Evan Spencer. And also I want to, Corey Smith uh, came out and made two tackles in kickoff cover. So look for Corey Smith if he continues to get things in order to be in a rotation with the receivers. Uh, with that said, tough. Uh, I don't want to say I didn't expect it because I did. I've great. I know Jerry Kill a long time. And uh, I always thought he's one of the best football coaches and his coaching staff's been together. I think his defense corner has been together to forever in the offense corner like 15 years. Uh, he's coached, he's won at every level, which I admire guys that do that. And uh, I got a lot of admiration for him as a coach. He knows that, he's a friend. And uh, his team, this is the first time I've coached against one of his teams, and it's, 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 uh, it's everything you'd think of a jury kill coach team. And relentless effort, uh, very well coached. I haven't studied their offense yet. Uh, but special teams and defense are very, very good. Statistically, they're very good. And to do that to Iowa, who I think Iowa's a heck of a team, that tells you they've they're got some momentum right now. So uh, we have to – we're done with the celebration part. Now we're learning from it, and the players will receive their uh, directive tomorrow, and, and we're moving forward. Front row, Dave. Coach, there's a report out there that Dontre Wilson is injured. Can oh, you address yeah. that? Dontre broke his foot. Yeah. He, uh, Actually caught a touchdown pass with a broken foot. That tells you, tough guy. He didn't have a good game. He had a couple balls on the ground. But uh, yeah, he's out for a few weeks. I don't know the extent. I'll get you that probably by Wednesday. Uh, they might have to put a pin in it. And, and uh, so. Obviously, Jalen's played well there. But uh, looking at the backups, Noah, Noah Brown, Brown gets in the mix, and Corey Smith gets in the mix. Evan uh, uh, Devin Spencer is a multiple uh, guy that can do a lot of things. Nick Vanette is a guy. So the good thing is there's there's some personnel. You know, it's not exactly like Dontre, but 
on 240 pound H back. Noah Brown brings a little something to the table too that works out. He's earned some right to play. So Curtis Samuel's just going to be a tailback. Curtis uh, Samuel's well, he gets some snaps there maybe. Uh, probably not now. Depends how recruiting goes. <laughs> because he can do a lot of things for us. Because you're, you're just so we're beat up at tailback too. You can't move a guy out of there yet. Irby, you kind of touched on this a little bit in your opening statement. How difficult is it? You guys, you had the loss to Virginia Tech. The win this week kind of gets you guys back into that mix. How difficult is it, though, to maintain this and, and keep pushing on that upward trajectory? It's not difficult. It's fine. I mean, that's the thing that Lou Holtz would always say. It's, uh, you know, it's, and this is where I think coaches make a lot of mistakes. It's, it's you don't just go blow the whole thing up when you lose a game. You know, that's, that's fragile. You know, that's, uh, you coach them really hard when you win. So you said how difficult. It's not difficult at all. You lose that game Saturday, it's really difficult. Now you got problems. Now you got, you know, motivation problems. So it's all the way we handle it. And the good thing is I got nine good coaches. And more importantly, I got players that understand that we're, uh, we, we didn't play as well as we could on defense. And we expect to play much better. Two weeks ago, we didn't play as well on offense. So there's plenty to work on. And with JT's progress, is he... One, have you coached a kid or a quarterback who's made as much progress in three weeks or three months as he has? And would you consider him a, a guy to throw out in, in a Heisman uh, mix right now? Well, great question. Um, I think Alex Smith was a guy that uh, obviously that's a big name. So uh, to start throwing Alex Smith around, but you asked me a question, and, and Alex could call a play his first snap against Utah State and went on to. Uh, be what he was, and really by the end of his first year playing for us, he was a sophomore. He made just every week really in, uh, incremental jumps as far as uh, how he handled business. Uh, JT's like that. JT's made incredible jumps as far as how he handles his business, and accuracy of passing last week was was fantastic. So, so to answer your question, um, I'm not seeing it. You know, I've seen one Alex make that kind of improvement, and you said as far as the Heisman. When I get national questions, it's so hard because I, you know, I, I have not seen anybody play. I've seen the teams replay, and I'll flip it on for on Thursday nights. So I'll watch some football, and that's about it. So I haven't seen. I, I think statistically, he's got to be in the mix somewhere. I, I think, but that's I haven't even asked Jerry for that information yet. Front row, Bill. Was Saturday's offense performance what you? Wanted to see when you it's our best them. performance we've had since we've been here. It's uh, it's very balanced, and I think you have to. What I always like to do is obviously statistically, I think we probably had more yards against other teams, but that was against a, a legitimate top five defense in America, and a bunch of NFL players on that defense, and uh, it was very well executed. And as far as the defense goes, obviously gave up 37 points, but as far as the pass defense, which. Chris Ash being higher, was that the triggering and the, the aggressiveness? Was that closer to what you had in mind? Yes, I mean, you take away, uh, you know, I, I, th I think when you get ahead by a couple scores, what happens, you start playing that bend but don't break, which I can't stand and I'm not sure many people can stand. But it's also probably the smart thing to do, keep the ball in front of you, close the middle of the field at times, which we, we did and gave up some yards. So I'm not in a panic. You know, I think our defense coaches are a little upset with the way things transpired that we got to get fixed and uh, we're still looking for that rotation at defensive line that I that's I'm, I'm, I'm upset about that, that that we can't get that done and so there's going to be a lot of pressure on guys this week to get that done. Front row, uh, Austin? Urban, when you recruit somebody like Jalen Marshall, even in high school do you start envisioning all the various ways that you can use them or do you have to wait till they get on campus before you can start no, we, we put the APB out every year for the multi-dimensional multi, uh, multi athlete on offense. Uh, and it's the tight end H and it's the tailback H. And we just, over the years, that position has evolved. It's, it's you, you, you like moving those checkers around when you have guys that can take direct snaps when you have in, in a quarterback. The thing I always look at, too, is, you know, Joe Hayden was a quarterback in high school. You're not going to just put your best player out there for 30 plays a game at corner. You know, if he's a great player, he's going to touch the football. And so uh, Jalen Marshall played quarterback in high school. It's right where he should have played. He's the best, probably, the, I don't know, but I, I do know because I watched him. He was the best player on that team. So we, we, the APB has always been out for those kind of athletes that can do multiple things. Are you, do you feel this year you're more comfortable taking a quarterback 
out and putting in Dontre Wilson or Jalen in that Wildcat than you were the last couple of years? Oh, yeah. Yeah, more with Jalen because he's a quarterback. Uh, Dontre, uh, yeah, we didn't do a lot. We, he, uh, Jalen was cramped and we did that little trick play with uh, Dontre in there, but I'm more comfortable with uh, – uh, we're slowly teaching Curtis, you know, because I think the Wildcats legitimate, especially at tempo. And, but Jalen gives you – and he can throw. You know, we have a couple passes ready for him too. Tim. Yeah. Perfect. When you look at JT Barrett, though, uh, you were asked a while ago for the Heisman kind of thing and stuff, but where has he made the biggest jump from the standpoint of just poise or whatever you want to call it? I mean, where, where can you definitely point to he is so much better than he was against Virginia Tech? Just the uh, understanding of the game. I think Tom's done a very good job with him, and I think the personal around him has really improved. Um, he was really prepared for this game, and so were the wideouts, uh, our, our two coaches on that side of the ball, and, and really the offense staff did a heck of a job getting that group ready. I felt it during the week, too. Uh, but his biggest jump is just the manage, you know, just being a, a manager. You know, he's, he does a good job getting us in the right play. He understands defenses really well now. And, uh, and his accuracy, when he's, when he's accurate, that's a tough one to stop. Because he gets us into the right, you know, the ones he missed, I think, the week before, he went the right place with the ball. He just misfired. You know, you don't see him very often go the wrong place with the ball. And that's, he's a very intellectual quarterback, very smart quarterback. Thing. Uh, Joey Bosa had, had 6.5 sacks his previous three games or something, yeah. some stat like that. Uh, Saturday night he was shut out from a sack standpoint. But did you see them very much ganging up on him as you studied things? I mean, what, what did you see a little frustration on his part? What did you see from him? Yeah, good. Uh, I saw good players get frustrated at times when they don't live up to the um, statistics or whatever. And I did. I watched. just finished watching the defense side of the ball today. And they did. They slid the formation to them. They had two guys usually assigned to them. And that just put a lot of pressure on the other guys to hold up their end of the bargain. And uh, Joey didn't play great a champion, so he's got things to work on too. But that, that's legitimate. When you hear that they're either putting a tailback to him or they're sliding to him, and that leaves a guard and a tackle to slide to him. That's, that's real, which is smart. I mean, that's, that's not going to go away. Second row middle, uh, Dave Briggs. Urban, I know you talked about this earlier this year, but just as JT continues to progress on pace to set a bunch of school records, do you kind of sense that you have a, a pretty tough decision coming up next year? Is that something you've given thought to? I mean, it's obviously become a big debate out there. Out where? Just out, outside. <laughs> <laughs> Not here. Uh, it's competition brings out the best, and uh, I'm really excited to have two really good quarterbacks next year if, that, if that's the plan. Just on an unrelated note, there's kind of an interesting stat. The teams the week after they played Navy this year are one and seven. You mentioned the, the Virginia Tech game in their opening statement. The one and seven. One and seven the week after, and I think Notre Dame. I can see that. Two and seven the last nine years. But how do you think the committee should should view that loss now that oh. you guys are? It's just. I mean, you guys Playing are Minnesota. You were young, but. I, I'll, I'll say this because I, I knew. I don't want to act like it's rehearsed, but it's a little re rehearsed because I tend to say stupid things sometimes. Uh, that early in the season, we were not a great team. We had a quarterback that was a quarterback for about two weeks uh, and did not play very well. We had an offense line that played horrible uh, that game. And there was a group of receivers that were not ready to play. Uh, the young guys were not. Uh, this is the most improved team that I've been a part of. This is a team that uh, I've been fortunate to be around some championship level teams. They have a common characteristics and they're grinders. And they get better each week. Those are championship level teams. So this is, uh, if, now once again, this could all be gone if we don't go out and continue to do what we do. And that's grind on a Tuesday and Wednesday and a Thursday. So uh, that's really the only thing I can really, because I don't really study other play out. You know, I keep getting all those questions and I don't know. But I do know a championship level team. The team continues to grow like they are. This, there's no question. This is one of them. Front row, Lori. I am sure that the guys need to recover physically this week from that game. Right. They also spent a lot of emotional energy, mental energy, adrenaline on that game. How do they recover from that standpoint this week? Uh, we spend. We're. we're I would say paranoid is probably an appropriate word on that. And my strength coach, um, Coach Mick, we they have eight hours on us. And that's, we have to get those eight hours back. And so we, we cut practice way down yesterday. We gave them a 10 o'clock curfew. We have no school on Tuesday. 
So there'll be another curfew tonight. So that's how we catch up. So that's that's very important what you just said. You're dealing with 18, 19, 20 year olds that need a lot of times direction. Not a lot. They need direction. And uh, this is a noon kickoff. And we got in at 3.30, you know. So that's that's a very serious. You, you tend to hide, lose hydration, body weight, and certainly rest. And the great thing, I didn't know we had a Tuesday off, but our kids don't have class on Tuesday. So that's a big makeup day for everything you just said. And that is real. I'm sure that that game also taught you a lot about the leadership of your club. I mean, who are the guys that you're trusting to refocus the players? Who is it that uh, that's stood our, out? Our, that's another great question. Duran Grant and Curtis Grant are phenomenal. And Jeff Hireman, you know, and Jacoby Bourne in his own way is becoming a leader. And Taylor Decker, I mean, we, this is, I'm starting to see some things surface that was uh, very much needed. And there's still some areas that we need more. I mean, the, the defensive back end right now, we need a little more leadership back there. Um, the defensive line, Mike Bennett's trying, but you need more than just him and you need to get some rotation going. So there's some weaknesses, but I am really seeing, and I saw it in the locker room before the game. And you can really, I, I'll sit there and watch videotape. And when a play goes out of bounds, I'll watch that play 15 to 30 times. I'm not watching the play anymore. I'm watching the sideline. I'm watching to see the invested player, who, who is, who's into the game going on. You know, when JT got knocked out of bounds and wiped out our strength coach, you know, I watched, ran that summer gun back, I mean, at least 30 times. I'm trying to watch each person and seeing who's invested. Because you can sit there and babble all you want in my office, but when it shows up in a game like that, and the good thing is we have a lot of invested players right now. Far left, Rusty. Urban, can the weather work against you this weekend? Uh, the Northern Stadium that's open? Um, the weather? That's going to be cold, I imagine, in Minnesota in November. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. the. I, I heard there's no snow or rain right now, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think they're a very good running team. It might limit some of the throw game stuff, and their defense is kind of built to stop the runs. So those are all – I don't know enough yet about them. It's just touch, Monday. You're going to touch on this also, but, I mean, a lot of times coaches have to give players attention the week after a big game. Is that something you feel like you have to do? Sure. Yeah. Uh, once again, we enjoy the win, learn from the win, and then they'll get the mission tomorrow, and that's – it'll be a big – I'll know after they, how they practice, but that's – we have to get, make sure they're ready for practice on Tuesday. Urban, you guys have talked a lot in the offseason about what you thought this offense could progress to this year. And it seems like what is happening is what you guys talked about months ago. How much of it is progress of the offense, or how much is sort of the way JT plays quarterback influencing how everything's working right now? I think it's more the people around them. I, I think uh, if you look back at our history since we've been here, uh, we were borderline pathetic at passing the ball our first year 2012. Um, last year we were you know, just above pathetic, not very good. And now we're pushing the envelope of you're throwing 300 yards against uh, Michigan State. So, you know, I, you know, and I don't blame fans. I'd be the same, throw the ball, throw the, throw the downfield. And, you know, I'm thinking, who are we going to throw it to? And now when I say who are we going to throw it to, four or five names pop into my mind, which is a good sign. So I do believe JT has a big part of it, but I think more importantly, those around him are playing much better. Uh, we have five guys I have no problem with throwing the ball to. You know, remember 2012, name who we could throw the ball to. And as a matter of fact, Evan Spencer deserves more than he's getting. He really does. And, you know, the good thing is it's, he understands the big picture. I know you just answered this question, but your quarterback was the two-time Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year. You got hurt for the year, and you bring in the next quarterback, and he's doing this. Like, it's a little crazy to you that your quarterback play is at this level and that you're going to have two guys on that roster and that this is the I – mean, Your you term is crazy. I don't right know if I've ever said that's kind of crazy. But, I mean, it's just, you have these two quarterbacks sitting – in this building, you lost the guy who was won every award, was going to break every record, and here you are. Uh, I don't use the term crazy. I think fortunate and uh, blessed are two things because a lot of people want either one of them because I think they're both excellent quarterbacks, excellent quarterbacks, and and uh, we'll worry about that day when it comes. But we're very fortunate to have those guys. But once again, I keep when you start saying that, J.T. Barrett is a product of those around him. I also say that when things aren't going as well. 
the quarterback is I've said that since the Alex Smith to Tebow to their product of those you put good guys around a good quarterback and teach them well there's usually a good chance good things are going to happen and right now the guys around them are the receivers had their best I'm kind of high on the receivers right now as you can tell and that's probably a first since we've been here uh, their coach did an excellent job preparing them they were loaded up ready to go in that locker room before the game and they went out and performed and JT Barrett threw the ball where he had. Now he did it with a very good accuracy, especially that third down in 23. Uh, that was a ridiculous shot. But also the kid catching the ball, there's probably, of all the guys I've ever coached, I don't know how many could made that cut. That was, that was dropped right over the outside shoulder. So a lot of good things going on. But once again, it's all, throw it all away if we don't take care of business Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in practice.